6th of September. Blimey, the year's going through past to uh, the cabinet evening, uh, cabinet meeting. Uh, first on the agenda, any apologies? No. Item two is to approve the minutes of the meeting held on the 17th of August 2023. Happy to move, happy to second. All those in favour? Item three, declaration of interest is to receive any declarations of members' interests in any matters which may which are to be considered in this meeting. No, no matters of interest. Perfect. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is uh, to answer any questions in pursuant of the executive procedure under rule number 13. Of is that ready to use, yeah? As there seems to be some conflicting information, including on your own signage at Marmion House, could you please confirm the, the opening hours for face-to-face -face help with regards council matters at Tamworth Information Centre? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Well, firstly, a uh, pleasure to see you as always. Thanks for coming. Um, and thanks for highlighting this. You you are quite right. There was a, an outdated sign there. Um, so that's been removed. It's a smaller poster. Um, we're committed to the face-to-face -face service there. And it is Monday to Saturday, 10 until 4. So that old sign has, has been removed. Thank you. Any supplementary questions? Yeah, thank you. So I think at a recent meeting, you said that just shy of 250 people had used that service, the face-to-face -face service. Now, obviously, when it first came about, it wasn't very well communicated. So over what period of time have those 250 people used the service? And now that you are communicating things better, are you seeing an increase in the number of people using it? Thank you. Okay, very valid questions, but I don't know the answer off the top of my head, the honest answer. I'd have to uh, ch look at that. I believe the figure I raised the other day was from the start of the year, um, but I need to double check. I'm happy to come back to you in writing and just confirm. Because um, it's, it's a good question. What, what, how much has it increased since we've communicated more? Um, but if I'd known in advance the question, I could have got the data, but I'm not sure tonight. But yeah, good, good question. Thank you. Thank you. Right, our next item refers to matters referred to the, the cabinet in accordance with the overall scrutiny rules. Nothing. Okay, moving swiftly on to our, our next item, number six, which is the uh, Staffordshire Sustainability Board update. Uh, and this evening that falls uh, in my remit. Um, this report uh, has already been through scrutiny, um, which went through. Uh, the purpose of it is that the, the draft application adaptation of the strategy, in conjunction in conjunction with Staffordshire Sustainability Board, um, and it is recommended that there's a, uh, that the draft um, adaptation strategy, which is, there is an appendix to it, is endorsed and to, to endorse that the uh, preparation of the adaption plan for the borough. Um, as this has already gone through scrutiny, any questions? Not tonight? Right, if that's, uh, that's okay, I'd like to move it. Second it. All those in favour? Thank you. Uh, item... Seven is the neighbourhood impact service on corporate antisocial behaviour. And who's got that? And that's in the hands of Councillor Summers. Thank you, Chair. Um, and Tina Mustafa as well, as Assistant Director of Neighbourhoods. As, yeah, I say as well because uh, Tina's 
head is more full than mine of this, I'm sure. So, but uh, there's a, it's a bumper report. Uh, a, there is a lot in it. Um, I mean, we've got um, some recommendations as well. Uh, but wrapped up in this report, we've got the um, we, we've got the launch, uh, obviously, as you say, of the neighbourhood impact service uh, under the uh, service transformation agreed under the reset recovery. Um, we've got a new corporate uh, and social behaviour team that will support and empower our communities and uh, will work in partnership with statutory partners as well as our own community safety partnership. And uh, that in itself secures efficiencies of around 30,000 per annum, but seeks to revitalise and market our, our offer, which is focused on corporate antisocial behaviour. Um, so just on that um we are going to have four officers covering four patches aligned to mirror neighborhood policing areas uh, it's going to be uh, tenure neutral all and social behavior triage and risk assessed with action plans agreed with all partners working collaboratively internally and externally to improve public perception of our place and it's going to have tailored access uh, through home visits um and uh, uh, access points Belgrave Fire and Police Station and Arringdon Office. Uh, new standards uh, for service standard with key measures, uh, so acknowledgements within one day of a complaint being received by the public uh, and agree an action plan of how we want to uh, contact them. And uh, the action plan that we're developing intends to uh, bring forward uh, the community safety hub proposals across our communities. So it's it's a it's a long way from as uh, what was called street warden service, but um, uh, it, it's hopefully going to be a much more efficient end to end service for our residents. They'll take ownership of the of the problems they're presented with and be able to work with our agencies um, across the board, um, which hopefully will you know improve things a lot. Um, and as I say. Perception is key for people, so if they can see that their issue is being handled and by normally one named individual, um, that will help them feel hopefully better about uh, how they are uh, having their issue dealt with. Um, did you want to say anything more on the um, on the community impact service, Tina, or just before I move on to the rest of them? No, that's covered fine. Thank you. Thank you. Means I've done a fair enough job, then I think. <laughs> um, also, in the report, we've got the government's antisocial behaviour action plan. Uh, as you may have seen, a, a uh, what would it imagine if it was printed a nice glossy report with uh, Rishi's face on it, um, re reinforcing key principles around a victim-centric approach, multi-agency working, and need for antisocial behaviour pathways, supporting inclusive and outcome focus are all integral, in, all are integral to Tamworth's approach. So it's just kind of reinforcing what we're we're already doing. Uh, and also then we've got the update on the shared CCTV service. Um, so we've, uh, obviously the, the, set, the service went live March 31st, 2020, uh, and it's delivered savings of over 500K so far, uh, and it's improved the service offer we have. We've got, um, we've had an independent report commissioned by the office of the CCTV commissioner, and that highlighted the achievements of having 154 cameras upgraded and that, uh, we accelerated investment satisfied community impact assessment around that uh, we have detailed intelligence reporting feeding into other intelligence to support hot spotting in uh, hot spotting particular um, areas around the town particularly the town center at weekends and we've got uh, Improved partner arrangements with PABSIS, which is Partners Against Business Crime in Staffordshire, which supports the retail and nighttime economy. And the police are finding the footage that they gather very useful. Uh, they can actually dial into the CCTV system and uh, draw down uh, evidence that they need directly without having to go through the, uh, the main control centre. And with the help of the control centre, they can guide cameras to where they want to see as well live. Um, and just on that as well, we are arranging a visit for all councillors to go and see that control centre because none of us have seen it in three years that it's been in operation, so it'd be good for us to see what's covered. Uh, 154 cameras around the town is probably not what you realise we had um, until tonight, but yeah, they are all there, um, upgraded up and working and uh, doing their job in the background. Um, so yeah, we're all going to go and see them hopefully a bit later this year. But uh, yeah, a lot, a lot in that report. Um, I mean, if you've got any uh, questions, then uh, 
you can try and ask me and I'll try and answer them uh, or you can ask Tina but uh, happy to uh, to move the recommendations in the report as stated thanks chair thanks uh, Martin yes um, it is comprehensive uh, lots of pages uh, so first I'd like to say well done uh, and secondly I'm going to open it to uh, councillor Jay who's got a couple of questions Thank you. Um, on page 39, it talks about launching a new digital tool for people to report antisocial behaviour and take a tougher approach in holding the police and agencies to account. So that tool, is that for them to report it to us, the council, so it doesn't go to the police? Is that right? Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Jay. Yes, so the interactive tool will be hosted on our website, so it allows us to triage and risk assess how we manage that corporate ASB. So it will be done by us first, but then obviously if it requires a multi-agency approach, then we'll have an action plan that signed post out to the relevant but to the relevant agency. But it will be us first and foremost who host that, yeah. So does that not risk um, people you know, thinking they reported it to the right place and they haven't. So, for for example, uh, if you on page forty, we've got the table. Uh, it shows the complaints received. Uh, again, I'm assuming they're the ones we're receiving to this team, right? So it's forty four percent is around nuisance vehicles, nuisance vehicles, quad bikes, etc. Riding around is an issue, and people are told to report to the police. And then the the feeling is they report to the police many times. They don't come out. Nothing happens. So I'm going to stop reporting it. Right, and then it looks like the issue's gone away, but it hasn't. People are just fed up. Um, is there not a risk that they start reporting it through this tool, thinking this is the way to do it, and then actually even less happens because the police aren't even aware? Is there any way to link it up to the to the police so they're actually getting the data, yeah, or from the police into ours somehow? Excellent question, and I think as we develop that tool, the the point behind it is that we'll be scripted and there'll be workflow so that if it we're able to sign post it out to those other agencies at that first point of contact, then that's our preferred approach. The issue we've got around having, you know, that single sort of contact point is that the police operate a completely different you know system and infrastructure they've got storm software which you know you can imagine has got all the firewalls around that so there's not an opportunity to have a national database that we can plug into but to limit that opportunity for there to be confusion because you're absolutely right you know people see us as being the answer to all the problems when we may only be part of that solution there will be a series of workflows behind that 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 within that first day of acknowledging triage it, risk assess it and signpost it and we communicate that properly and we will be working hard to manage expectations around that. So as you can see from the improvement plan, the work around that won't come, you know, we'll do the work the over the next year but the actual launching of that won't come until the year after because we don't want to sort of go off at a tangent if you like and run that risk. Um, so there'll be a lot of mapping done around that first with partners to see how best we can manage it. But at the moment, what we're being told is because it's not coordinated in terms of how ASB comes in just to the council, let alone other agencies, we want to make that an improvement so that this team becomes the council's corporate team that manages the flow of that information. But what we can't be is the host for every other agency. Thank you. If I can just add to that, and I think it is a, it's a, it's a very good point you raise, uh, Councillor Jay. This is not an alternative for 999, and I think that will, that will be very, very clear um, in, in the way it's produced. So as if it is immediate threat to life or, or, or property, then that, you know, that's a, a 999 call and not a council uh, issue, a police matter. Um, you know, just so, so I think we're, we're, we're clear this is um, a, a different route for antisocial behaviour rather than criminality um, per, per se, I think. Yeah, so I've got another point that's linked to that. So I was going to mention about the communications. We need to be really careful how we communicate it out so people come for the right reasons. Um, the... Oh, sorry. There we go. Um, I lost where I was now. Yeah. So is there any way of looking in that phase where we're building it or designing it, looking at... So when you're doing the triage, and you can see... It's, is there a, can we have a question? Have you reported just to the police or something? And if they've 
they have to take no or something. Can we send it to the police? Is there any any way of getting the, the data across to them? Absolutely. And as Councillor Summers alluded to earlier, the patch officers who are going to be looking after the corporate ASB have been aligned to the neighbourhood policing area, so they'll be working closely with PCSOs. Um, on a face-to-face -face basis anyway. Um, but like you say, in terms of that IT solution, we'll, we'll want something fairly slick. That means if somebody rings and, for example, they say there's a crime in progress, well, then that's diverted straight away and we, people are told to ring 999. As we, as we already have on things like our Finding a Home website, you know, people have dropped down boxes to ask questions and it's almost like a flowchart. If you answer no, it takes you down a different path. Yeah, absolutely. So, but that is sophisticated. It sounds simple in this day and age, but in order to build the workflows around that, will take time to do that. Um, and But you, you make a very valid point around communication because we are really p proud of the service transformation with this team, but we've got to manage expectations. You know, because ASB is a very emotive issue um, and we want to sort of the service standard and the service offer in the report. We want to develop that on our website, share that with partners, share it with community leaders so we get that message out and, and you know, it makes a meaningful impact. But it will take time, you know, we're not sort of selling the dream at this stage. It's about doing having that regular annual impact assessment. Yeah, and the key thing, I mean, the service will be uh, monitored and, uh, you know, f improved as time goes on. But um, from kind of like a a disparate approach, you know, across different areas of the council, this is joining it up into one service and giving, uh, you know, what a, a purpose to what was the, the street warden team who could be here, there and everywhere, you know, which, you know, it, it's it's going to be a bit of a change um in, in, in terms of that service, but it's going to be a positive change for residents, especially as that one point of entry, one case manager, end to end dealing with your problem um, as it comes in. But yeah, it's uh, it's definitely not a 999 alternative anyway. It's, um, it's just dealing with what we're already dealing with, but in a much more joined up uh, approach. One more. Um, just on page 42, You've got, you've got the map and the four patch areas. What what's the shading? It they don't, they don't seem to match the the patches above. I'd have to look into that case, Lady. I'm sure they must have just copied the map, and it might have been right. It's already coloured in, right? It's, okay. it's, it's, it's not meant for any other reason other than that. Just shows some of those areas. That's when all. you first glance your eye, it looks like well, Amington, Boldhall, Glasgow, and Belgrave are not going to have any of this because they're okay. <laughs> um, no. But then the table shows different, so yeah. that's fine. No, it's the table that's accurate with the narrative. Yeah. Right, okay. Well, anyway, um, thanks for answering the questions. And like Mark, uh, Councillor Summer said, I think it's a really positive thing. Thank you. Yeah, thanks again. I mean, it is great to look to hear that we're looking at it holistically, and this could actually help guide our strategy going forward. You know, how big is the problem? How much resources we need to throw at it? What budgets we need to look at over the next whatever period? And hopefully, if it declines, less budgets and we can do other things. So, yeah, great. Um, moving swiftly on to... Um, on, sure. I, I've moved uh, the recommendations. Yeah, I just need someone to second it, please. Yeah, well, thank you. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, moving swiftly on, we need to move it and second yeah. it again. <laughs> anyway. It's good to be kept on your toes, isn't it? Uh, all those in favour? Once again, thanks for you and your team. Uh, our next item is Council Housing Decant Policy 2023 to 2026, and that's in the capable hands of our portfolio holder for housing and planning. Councillor Smith. Yeah, the Assistant Director of Neighbourhoods is going to be uh, much better at going through this than me. But just to say, it's an update of the Council's uh, DCAM policy, um, which sort of intertwines uh, with the um, a lot of the housing regulations that are coming through now. But um, if that's okay with you, Chair, I'll pass it off to um, Tina Mustafa. Over to you, Tina. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Councillor Smith. So, um, yes, this uh, report is, is probably more routine and housekeeping than was the last one, um, in that this presents an updated 
decamp policy, which is one of a suite of housing related policies that we're required by the regulator to have updated and you know in place so this is part of that new social housing regulation act it fits as part of the tenancy um, consumer standard um, and it just sets out what the arrangements are for that so in effect quite simply a decant is the temporary relocation of somebody or a household um, because they can't stop in the current property for whatever reason. Often that's to allow for repairs to be undertaken if there are disrepair, um, but it is very much a temporary move. And this policy is the framework around how we achieve that through licence arrangements. Um, so it's, it's heavily regulated, it's set in legislation, it's a matter of fact, um, but it, we, we only do around 10 a year, but they are complex and obviously they're incredibly important to the households who are disrupted. So it sets out what our compensation arrangements would be around that and how we seek to recover that. Um, it also distinguishes around the decommissioner of properties, which is something entirely different. Um, so that's where we might want to regenerate an area. For those of you who were involved in Tinkers and Kerrier many years ago, um, it, the, the decamp policy also talks about what that means and what the statutory harm mm -hmm. loss and disturbance payments are. Um, so it's it's housekeeping, it, it ticks off one of the policies and you'll be seeing quite a few of these come over the next few months to make sure we've got them all updated. So thank you for that, Councillor Smith. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, any questions on that side? Oh, TJ. Um, <clears throat> like I said, it's just a housekeeping, so no issues with the actual report per se. Just, um, it'd be good. Maybe this is just me being future. If there's a just an, a table of summary of changes, summary mm -hmm. of key changes that just because you've got in the, on the, f the the master sheet, it does say there's, there was five versions this year, and it kind of does say, for example, home loss calculations added. But didn't really explain what that was. What was wrong with it before? Was it an error? Was it not clear? You know, just a, some kind of summary of key changes mm -hmm. um, would be helpful. I don't know if that's just me, but um, yeah. Apart from that, I think it's, it's fine. It's good. Yeah, if I can just comment on that though. So the last time the decant policy was done was 2014. So that audit sort of track and that table you can see there is just our internal controls around what was probably missing in this draft. But in terms of sort of saying what was different from the last po the last arrangement, um, it's pretty much been rewritten. So those are internal changes, but I absolutely agree we'll do that with others. Thank you. Right, I'm just going to move it. Second it. All those in favour? Thank you. Come to the end of the meeting, so uh, thank you everybody for attending. Uh, please pass on our thanks to your team. Hey, great job. Have a lovely evening. <laughs>